Griech Castle is steeped in history. It was built around 1812 as a country house by Lloyd Hesketh Bamford Hesketh and enjoys glorious views across Parkland towards the Irish Sea. But over the years, its grandeur has slowly faded and its picturesque magic has lost some of its charm. Until now, a knight, not in shining armor, but in jeans and a jacket, has turned up and a happy ever after has finally been found. As a schoolboy, Mark Baker used to walk past Greek Castle near Abigella. Its haunting good looks fueled his imagination. It broke his heart to see the castle deteriorate. So, like any good knight, he fought to right a wrong and vowed to save it at the tender age of 11. I just decided that something needs to be done about it because no one else was really kind of taking any interest. Fast forward 21 years, and Mark has indeed been true to his cause. He successfully set up Greek Castle Preservation Trust to raise funds, winning support from Prince Charles along the way. So it was the words of the Prince of Wales himself who actually kept you going on this? Well, it gave me the encouragement, definitely. And um, to have someone who was so passionate about architecture um, and you know, famed for his kind of views on architecture to kind of be telling me that. You know, I took it kind of like a royal command. <laughs> <laughs> and last year, all the effort paid off. The charitable trust bought the castle and work started immediately. So it's sort of a dream and you kind of, in small steps, making them come to fruition. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's, you know, it's, a, it's a place built on dreams. You know, it's someone's vision and um, it's kind of continuing that ethos, which I quite like. So you're forming your own place in the history of this, uh, this whole area, really? I think everyone does. It kind of yeah. becomes part of it. It's kind of got this, this kind of magnetism, um, which is kind of, I don't know, it's like this fairy tale castle. That it people, is magical, isn't it? People fall in love with. The castle is vast. It has 18 towers and 120 rooms, and walking around gives you a sense of the huge scale of the job ahead. But Mark is unfazed. So this is the bakehouse? Yeah, so this was used for baking, as right. in the name, and built around 1820. We restored this within a week of purchase because we desperately needed some kind of dry space. So it's got um, reclaimed slates, copper nails, it's all been lime washed as it would have been. It's looking good? Yeah, yeah. Let's carry on. Okay. And his passion is as solid as the castle walls. Well, now this looks like a serious door. What's behind there? So this was the family's private entrance into the castle. Ah. Well, there's a lot of scaffolding. So this is our next big project, which is, first of all, conservation work. Yeah just to try and kind of work out how bad the walls are and then we'll reinstate the roof. So it's a like for like repair. So what was here originally, we're gonna put back. So the family would come down these steps and then get to a landing. To the right, you went up to the private chapel. Directly down the corridor was all their like rooms, their bedrooms and dressing rooms. And then to the left was a marble staircase. Which is one of the famous features. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully Definitely. we'll see that again. Yeah. The restoration journey has only just begun, and there's still so much to do. The castle is a treasure trove of history, but thanks to Mark and the Trust, its past and future are now secure. Well, Mark, we seem to have found ourselves in the warmest room in the whole castle, which is the fully restored writing room. Yeah. yeah. And I think that strikes me about this is, I can just imagine how the whole place will look when it's finally done. So. Mm. Thank you very much for showing me around. Well, really thank you very it. much. And it's thank great you. to know there's people like you keeping places like this alive. Thank you very much.